name is Catherine Lukoff. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in a previous life, I ran a music streaming service for five years. I am grey beneath the blonde. And I now head up a cloud innovation unit for a software company called Swipe IX. Uh, we are based in South Africa and we've been building some pretty fun, cool deep tech stuff. And today I'm here to speak to you about a facial recognition product that we built. Now 15 minutes isn't nearly enough to get through some of the more contentious issues around facial recognition. So I'm more than happy to have an offline conversation with those who'd like to take me on about bias and law enforcement and everything else. So this slide is really about what is facial recognition. I'll start with the basics. For those who don't know, though I'm sure you all do, facial recognition is really the ability to identify a face in a, in a video or in a photo. And so the technology has actually been around for a couple of decades, but as machine learning has improved, so too has facial recognition software, and it's become more ubiquitous, and it's definitely far more accessible. I'm sure many of you have been using uh, facial, uh, been using um, photo apps and potentially using your face to unlock your phone. That's all based on facial recognition. Um, oh, are you switching me on? Okay, cool. So to understand that, I think we really should start with the absolute basics, which is facial recognition software essentially is a system that allows a user to identify where in a photo or a video the face is positioned. It really looks at the attributes of that face, the facial geometry. It could be things like, what's your mood? What's your eye color? Are they open or closed? How far apart are your eyes? What is your hair color, et cetera? And um, for example, the, the, the tools are essentially built on a probabilistic model. So they predict how accurate they might be in guessing that the person in the photo is the person that you think it should be. So the application of that really boils down to similarity thresholds and confidence scores and so forth. So by way of example, if you Amazon Web Services is recommending that if you are going to be using facial recognition in any way that might threaten civil liberties or in law enforcement, that that, prob that, that, that confidence score should be 99% or higher. In other words, the higher the, the, the confidence score, the more you can trust that the results are actually accurate. Um, and the cool key thing about this is essentially that the the more data you use and and the more there we go thank you um, the the bigger the data set and the more diverse the data set obviously the better the results will be at the end of the day so the question I always get is is it safe what happens to my privacy what about my data where does it all go and the truth of the matter is is that there are a couple of misconceptions around facial recognition the first is that you might think that humans are better at recognizing faces than machines and you would be wrong. And so it turns out that the National Institutes for Standards and Technology recently released a report on facial recognition that proved that even older models, two years plus, are better at recognizing human faces than we are. Surprising, I know. The second is, is that, um, as with any probabilistic model, the mere existence of false positives doesn't mean that facial recognition is flawed. It merely emphasizes the need to actually have best practice and to ensure that um, the data sets you're using um, is being trained accurately and that you continue to train them. And so, um, you know, making sure that you're setting those thresholds and that you're using best practice across the board is, is really crucial. Um, I mentioned the AWS example, but I think the really key thing here is if we look at the product we've built, which I'll demo in a second, um, maybe a minute or three, but we set it at 95% accuracy. And we're also really clear on the fact that we don't want it to be used as a first line of defense in terms of um, a security clearance. So we don't want it to be the thing that allows you to unlock a door. And so therefore, I think companies, um, if you look at the work that Amazon and IBM and a bunch of others are doing, they're really making sure that those best practices are well known. They're lobbying government around this. And they're making sure that everybody who is getting involved in this, in this um, technology is contributing to it. And it really leads to that open and honest conversation that we all should be having. One of the key advantages, which is great, is that w with this technology, the more you work on it and the more it's being trained, the better it gets, and those uh, improvements do trickle down. So we spoke a little about bias. I do have a slide for that. Um, many of you will be aware of the furore lately around bias in terms of gender, race, uh, ethnicity, um, age. I mean, I have been known to stand in front of one of these cameras, and if I smile, they think I'm... 21 and if I frown they think I'm 56 so you know this is entirely possible I know that Oprah Winfrey has been identified as a man so yeah there are some issues 
Um, and of course, for, for technology to perform as desired, in other words, for it to be fair and for it to be accurate, we need to make sure that the data we're training it with is essentially representative. And so us as humans, all seven billion of us, look very, very different. And so it has been known that a lot of this technology is often skewed towards identifying white men. And so you do have projects such as the Million Faces uh, data set that IBM is trying to build. And I really think that it boils down to each and every one of us who's playing in the space to ensure that we are um, kind of planning for and auditing to ensure that there is diversity in the data sets we use and that we continue to retrain these, these models. Um, it is obviously only as good as the, the data you train it on. But there is luckily room for improvement. I love this Giphy. I don't know why, I just loved it. But so Giphy Cat actually um, was using some facial uh, recognition technology and what they realized is that they were struggling to identify Asian faces. And so on their own accord, they started tweaking that, um, that software and the algorithms they were using. And they've now reached the point where they can actually identify the K-pop band individually for twice. So, um, you know, these improvements do trickle down. And, and I know for a fact that the likes of Amazon Web Services are doing a lot of work in East Africa and other spaces to try and ensure that this bias issue does move for, um, you know, is overcome. Other issues, of course, is law enforcement. Um, for those of you who read the scary stories, you do have guys, um, the Chinese law enforcement that are now wearing sunglasses that really allow them to identify people on the street. You know, it really is going to boil down to the likes of Microsoft and Amazon and the big guys lobbying government around how law enforcement is making use of this technology and, of course, transparency. So, um, some more real-world examples in this uh, industry. Many of you may be aware that Taylor Swift's been using facial recognition at her, con um, I was about to say conference, at her um, shows, the most recent being an incident where there were um, uh, rehearsal clips that people would stop and look at. And there was actually a camera behind that screen that was taking photos and that was being sent back to, wait for it, a command center in Nashville. And they were essentially cross-referencing that with stalkers. Now I have two problems with this. The first being that um, I'm you know, not telling people that there is facial recognition or surveillance underway is a, is a big ethical issue. And secondly, this woman has hundreds of stalkers. So as a, a female myself, I, would, and I completely understand why she would want to know if there are stalkers in the audience. Um, and it's a scary thought that there would be that many people stalking you. But of course, it's the way that it's being done that is posing some, some big discussions in, in the industry. A more positive example is Blink Identity, um, and here I need to quote. They say that they've built revolutionary identity in motion product, which identifies people as they walk past a sensor at full walking speed, enabling frictionless identification. So I mean, you can think of the, the implications for this. In fact, they've just been acquired by Live Nation Entertainment. If you're a VIP wanting to access the Golden Circle and you only need to use your face as your ticket, that's a pretty great experience. So more and more, I think we're going to see examples in the ticketing space, access control, et cetera, coming through. So, Speaking of use cases, um, access control is a big one. China seems to be leading in facial recognition. So many of their big tourist spots, you now actually get to go in just using your face and your identity card. So two-factor authentication comes into play. Banking is starting to use it. West Africa, you have guys like Ayala Credit that allows you to take a selfie to register your self-worth and actually suddenly emerging markets have access to, to credit and loans that they wouldn't otherwise have had. Um, we certainly have the, the law enforcement examples I've mentioned. Some of the stuff we're playing in is sentiment analysis, so putting deep lens cameras into retail stores to check whether people are happy or sad or how long a queue is and a line for the Americans in the audience and essentially seeing whether you should be optimizing your tellers to bring more people out so that that experience from a retail perspective is, is smoother and better. Um, one of my favorites is something that MasterCard Identity is doing, which is smile to pay. So you basically walk up to a KFC kiosk and you order your Streetwise 2 and you smile and you've paid. Now, who doesn't want to smile before they buy a new pair of shoes or I don't know, a new laptop um, for the geeks amongst us? Um, there certainly are quite a number of companies playing in the space. Um, the numbers are staggering in terms of funding. So uh, since time just recently raised 620 million US dollars. Do you know what I can do with that amount of money? 
Um, and their valuation is 4.5 billion. MegV has actually just raised 500 million US and they're valued at 3.5 billion. That's with a B. So there's a lot of money being thrown into the space. And the tech giants are getting behind it. So the guys that are starting to, to work with machine learning and AI are certainly seeing the funding that they need. Um, and I like the idea of 10% acquisitions. So the product we built really started with a conversation we had with Amazon Web Services where I was like, well, why do you still have paper-based books that I have to sign in on? I have to tell you my name and my surname and who I'm here to see and the time of day and what if there's a fire in the building? Will you even know I'm here? Because I usually tell you I'm Superman and I changed the last digit of my phone number because, yeah, it's my data. So um, we went ahead and built a product using Amazon recognition. Um, it's really easy. There's a small demo, but essentially when you get there the first time, there's a the um, camera on the tablet is always open. It uses, uses at the edge machine learning and it uses the onboard camera. It will really take about less than a second. We'll see whether it knows you or not, ask you to fill in your details. It allows you the right to be forgotten in the future, which so it makes it GDPR compliant and a number of other um, regulatory things that we've considered within that. Um, it tells the person who you're here to see that you're here and it can have third party integrations like Slack or email or SMS. Um, to give you an idea, for 11 million recognitions, it costs you $23, so it's super cheap to run. And essentially the idea behind it is that the next time you come, you don't have to start from scratch. Um, and we built it in less than a month. We're implementing it at the AWS office and we're now looking at how else we can implement it, for example, at membership clubs, so Virgin Active Gyms or um, you know, business clubs, etc. Again, making sure that we don't have um, you know, first line of defense because you do still need to you know, be able to prove proof of life and a number of other things um, because we do want to ensure that we, we don't have too much of a failure rate. Um, I've mentioned that I think the space is going to grow and it's going to continue to grow. And just because technology um, poses issues such as that of bias or how it's being implemented, um, you know, faces not being recognized um, because of skin color potentially, um, I don't think that new technology should be condemned just because we don't understand it. It really allows us to open a conversation about how to use it better and to have more of these conversations and think more broadly because I promise you there's someone out there thinking how to use it for um, nefarious means. No, what's the other one? The bad one. Yes, nefarious, right? Thank you. I am Afrikaans, this is my second language. Um, so I think that's really important. I think um, even more so it's important for the people implementing the technology to make sure that we are setting those thresholds and that we are looking at the data sets we're using and that we're ensuring that we are having open and honest conversations and that we're auditing ourselves. Um, it's not going anywhere, so we better start getting good at it. And I would encourage everyone in the room who's interested in this to read up on best practices, to understand how the big guys are lobbying government, to understand how you can get involved in making sure that you're contributing in a meaningful way. Um, I think the really important thing is that we have to ensure that uh, in any way that we're infringing on someone's rights, that we're considering that. Um, and I'm interested to see what's going to happen in the future. You know, are we going to have filters that allow you to obscure certain pixels so that before you load a photo to the internet, it confuses any facial recognition software? Or I've read about someone who's really looking at patterns in clothing so that it confuses cameras. There's going to be weird shit coming up, pardon my French. And yeah, I think that's going to be great to see. Um, I think ultimately, you know, for us, we make sure that the way we implement and the people we work with um, are aware of the potential implications. I'd welcome anyone who has more ideas for what we can do with it. This was a little POC we built and we wanted to see what would happen. And uh, it's just fun to play with cool tech. So yeah, that's me. Thanks for listening. Thank you.